Okay, it's 4 p.m. sharp, and probably we have to start, right? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Anytime. Okay, maybe I'll I'll tell a few words in Russian, then I uh, tell the same in English, uh, just for a couple of minutes. Um, ну что, уважаемые коллеги, я на всякий случай скажу по-русски, но все остальное будет, конечно, по-английски. Значит, мы начинаем цикл лекций профессора Массима. Ланце де Кристофорис, это профессор итальянского университета из Падуи, известный ученый в области анализа дифференциальных уравнений, частых дифференциальных уравнений, функциональных пространств. Я уверен, что лекции будут полезны, что вы многому научитесь. Как я сказал, дальнейшие все действия, переговоры, вопросы будут на английском. So I turned on English and I just presented you. Uh, Professor Massimo knows uh, Russian, so he understood what I said, actually, I guess. So, well, thank you, thank you, Massimo, very much for agreeing to present your lectures. And I, I'm sure that our students will enjoy your lectures. And please go ahead. Thank you very much again. Please go ahead. Okay, so as our applicants, first I would like also to say a couple of words in English because my Russian is very limited. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the doctoral school of your university for inviting me to deliver these lectures, and in particular, Professor Karapetians. And uh, I hope that one time we will be able to meet in presence, uh, maybe in some better times without COVID. Okay, so let me say that. Uh, uh, my interest into Mori spaces, the okay, the lectures would be on Mori spaces, is because of some work on um, um, nonlinear operators acting in uh, Mori spaces. And uh, nowadays we are also trying to with the Professor Karapetians. And uh, I was introduced to Mori spaces maybe some 12 years ago, a little bit more. And I owe uh, my introduction to Mori spaces to Professor Burienkov, Viktor Ivanovich Burienkov from Moscow. And uh, so let me say a couple of words on some technical issues. Uh, first of all, my email address is, let me see here, okay. M, can you see well? DC at M-A-T-H dot U-N-I-P-D dot I-T. And I will be able to answer Questions, questions by email too, if necessary, if you wish. And also, I will write some lecture notes. And give the PDF. PDF. To Professor Karapetians. Also, I want to say that um, I hope that uh, the connection, the internet connection will work fine and that I will be able to lecture, let's say, at a normal speed. However, sometimes with the, uh, using the internet, I experienced that um, in the past, the and I will not be able to work out all the proofs, but all the proof material will be in the lecture notes. So you do not have to worry about it, only that I will, um, give them to you later. Today we will work at least on one proof of what we have to say. Okay, so let me say if there are other issues here, maybe some technical issues, I uh, know. So no, now let me start. And let me say that uh, the definition of Mori space, it's a little bit uh, uh, unusual, let's say, it's not uh, immediate. So I think it deserves a few comments. So the first part of my lecture will be on some comments on uh, the definition of, uh, of Mori space. And the first, I want to start with uh, some notation. So, uh, so let me erase this, that was wrong way, sorry. Okay, so assume that omega is a subset of Rn, omega open. Okay, and no assumption whatsoever on omega by now. And uh, then also we assume that uh, we take P, later on we will be in the interval one plus infinity. 
for these introductory remarks, we will stay on the case in which it is not infinity. So we put here an open bracket, but later on we will also ask the infinity case. Okay, so let me start with a comment, which is the following. Assume that you have a function f, which is in LP of omega. And uh, you remember that uh, this means uh, the space of functions f from omega to r. Let's take the real value case, but also speak about the complex, such that f is measurable. And uh, the integral of fp dx dx one would be is less than infinity. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> I use this notation here: the extension of the function omega f to our n is defined as follows. If the function which is equal to fx, if x is in the set omega, and is equal to zero elsewhere. So if x belongs to Rn minus omega. Okay. And uh, let me say that uh, if you have this uh, function f which stays in Lp, then the function, the extended function f, ef, the omega f, will belong to Lp, of course, over n. It's well known. Extend by zero, so you don't have add any contribution to the integral. And if you make it in Rn, because it's zero elsewhere. And uh, then we also know that this is contained in L1 local over n. Okay, in particular, when you have this information here, you know that uh, uh, you have the uh, Lebesgue differentiation field. Then the Lebesgue differentiation theorem theorem says that. The limit as the radius r tends to zero of the average integral. I explain the meaning of this symbol in a moment, although I know that I'm sure that everybody knows it. Of e omega f dx. This is to the um, so yes, this integral, average integral is, and maybe you can put also, yes, this average integral is, it is e omega f, so this is omega at the point x, maybe this is here, for almost all, For almost all x which are in Rn. Okay, this is the the back differentiation field. Here there is a PDC here. So, okay, this is true almost everywhere. Let me explain the symbol. The symbol integral on BXR uh, on over function g. Let's say. It's nothing else with it with the cut here you see means one divided by the measure, the nth dimensional measure of the ball. Now we set down all the notation. Okay. Integral of G dx, dx we said. Okay. This is just a symbol. Okay. And uh, and um, also I want to say that the ball. As everybody knows, it's center x and radius r is the set of y in our n, such that the distance between x and y is less than the radius. Okay, so 
This is a classical result in real analysis. It's the Lebesgue differentiation theorem, and we are going to use it uh, in a few instances during the, uh, during the lectures. Okay, so as an immediate consequence of this, we have that uh, the limit, so limit as r tends to zero of, uh, let, let me write uh, what it is here, the measure of the xr, and the uh, integral of b x r intersection omega of f b d x to the one over p it's equal to f x for almost all points x now only in omega you see because the extension is just f x in omega now here, the extension in omega, you remember, it's a zero outside of omega. So here you cut the integral, you see on the set of points which are in omega, because outside the extension was zero, okay? So this is what happens for almost all points. In particular, if you fix a point, in particular, oh, by the way, also I want to say that uh, notation, it's, I will denote by omega n, the volume, of a ball of center zero and radius one. Okay. Ball in our n, of course. Why in our n? Okay. And uh, then, in particular, from this information here, you see if you fix x, you have this limiting relation. And therefore, if, in particular, if for almost all x in omega, there exists a constant. There are these two constants. Constant, let's say, cx and rho x, which may well depend on x, by the way, such that this inequality is a satisfied. You just bring this one on the other side, that's all. So integral bxr intersection omega of fy pdy one over p less or equal than this constant. You can compute a possible value of this constant if you wish very easily, times r to the n over p for all r's which stay in the interval zero and ox. This is an immediate consequence of the dislimiting relation because you could put this measure on the right hand side. Since this is a limit, if you take a bigger constant, this stays below. So this is really trivial on calculus one exercise. But in general, what I insist on this fact that uh, that both this constant and this constant would heavily depend on x, of course, where they exist. Okay, in general, we cannot expect that uh, you can make a uniform choice of Cx and Ox in general. We cannot expect to be able to make a uniform. choice of Cx, Ox, which holds for all x or for almost all x. So we cannot hope. Indeed, in other words, in other words, We can also expect the existence always expect the existence of C greater than zero, O greater than zero. And here I have removed, you see here and here, X. So there is no X anymore such that.
the above inequality, which is dxr intersection omega f of y, p dy, one over p, less or equal than constant r n over p for all r's in the zero of. So let me go over once more. Here you have rho x and here you have cx. Here instead, we are saying, we cannot expect in general that you have c and rho. So a c and rho which hold for every point or, or at least for almost all points. Indeed, the existence of such zero for almost all x would imply by the Lebesgue differentiation theorem theorem. Remember that they said the limit as r goes to zero when you take the average. So when you divide by a constant like r and constant over p, you get the x, which is less or equal than c omega n minus one p, immediate computation of one line implies f is an infinity. So in general, we cannot expect that. So Moray's idea, Moray in 1938, to study studying existence and regularity of an elliptic equation, elliptic, was it in an equation, but in any case, equation. I had an idea. So he, he considered, he replaced, he considered functions Satisfy. Now you go to this very same inequality here, and you modify this exponent here. You take a lower exponent instead of n over p. Добрый вечер. Okay, I want to focus here that here we are putting lambda. So we no longer have n over p, but a smaller number, number lambda for all r's in the zero row. And he wants rho to become, to be uniform in x, okay? Okay. And uh, for lambda, which is less than n over p, and also remains uh, greater or equal than zero. Okay, so this is what Moray considered. And here we can write Moray's inequality. Okay, so that was his idea. And you can ask me, well, is this gonna be hold for, for a class of functions or, or just, you know, an empty condition? Okay, so you can observe very easily that uh, if we take a Q, for example, which is greater than P, then the Helder inequality implies that that 
you remember the Helder inequality. The Helder inequality has a consequence in the embedding of LQ into LP, which is precisely the following the integral of BXR, intersection omega, FP, dy, one over P is less or equal that the measure of the domain of integration, which is the measure of BXR intersection omega to the power one over P one is one over Q. And here you have the norm of F. Actually, I could put on here, but I take a larger set. So the equality is true. And uh, this is uh, equal, if you wish. Let me move this stuff here somewhere else. Here. Um, actually equal to the volume of the unit ball to the power one over P, one over, one over Q, times the radius to the power N over P minus N over Q. This is because of the formula of the volume for the ball. By the way, less or equal because we left the and uh, this is times f lq omega, and this is finite if if provided that the function f becomes in uh, belongs to lq omega. And uh, here, in case measure n omega is finite. So at least in this example, so conclusion, all functions in of n q omega are actually With this assumption that the volume is finite, in uh, um, um, sorry, actually satisfy Morris inequality, for lambda equal to n over p minus n over q. Okay, so this gives a large variety of examples of these Mori functions with, with these functions which satisfy the Mori's inequality with this value here of lambda. Okay, as so I said, the such a condition is condition as first considered like, so Mori's condition. In 1938, but uh, only later, only in the 60s, only in the 60s, with uh, some famous mathematicians that are, we can quote, uh, Brumi. and the Campanato, Sergio Campanato, Italian from Italy. And um, Jack Pietri, famous internship teacher. Uh, there has been a sort of study, uh, there has been a study study of the space of functions, the spaces of functions. That's satisfied. More is condition, more is inequality. And then, of course, after the 60s, a lot of more work has been done, but in this course, we'll stay close to the basics. Okay, so 
Now uh, we go back to Morex condition and we revisit again. So now we would like to introduce a notation. For the best constant that satisfies more inequality. For the best constant, if any. Or more is inequality. So we introduce this number. Okay, so we take again, I remind to you that P was between one and plus infinity. In the examples above, we're taking only the, the finite case, but we can also consider the plus infinity, of course. And then lambda will take a number which is zero and plus infinity. And then uh, I consider this number here, and the, of course the function f from the omega to r with the values that is at least measurable. And you consider this number here, which for each choice, fixed choice of a positive row for which is comma function r to the minus lambda p omega is defined in the following way it's a supremum when x goes in is it arranges in omega and r arranges in the interval zero row then we take the um the, the right hand side let's say of Morris inequality which was the p norm of the xr intersection of omega and then you remember at the end right hand side you have constant times r to the lambda so here we write r to the minus lambda and if you take the soup then this becomes the best constant let's say if any for the function f of course, obviously, here you have only know that it is measurable. This may be plus infinity, for example. Obviously, f rho r to the minus lambda p omega. It's an element of zero plus infinity, including plus infinity. And if plus infinity is not uh, obtained, so if this is a finite number, then you have a more inequality all points okay and uh, we said already f measurable and uh, in case of, and then uh, also i want to introduce uh, the space m uh, to the minus lambda by the way here rho can even be not only between zero but the rho can be even plus infinity between zero and plus infinity so you accept also this value here, let's uh, generalize it this way. Okay, now you can consider the space here, P comma O omega, which is the set of functions F. Okay, let me introduce an abbreviation, R to the omega. This means exactly F is a function from omega to R, okay? such that f is measurable and this number here this test constant is fine okay and uh, then of course you can put an arm here and then you call an if F is in this space. We can set the norm of F in R to the minus lambda rho e omega to be precisely this best constant. Okay. And this is a norm, 
and the m m r to the minus lambda rho p r to the exponent minus lambda here it is to make a comma with this norm here is a non space and by the way the verification is trivial just a triangular inequality. And for short, you write, you write this. You write, uh, for example, F O comma lambda comma P comma omega and uh, M lambda rho p omega instead of of the more complicated f rho comma r to the minus lambda this is rho by the way p omega m r to the minus lambda rho p omega if no immediately. Can you rise? Okay. And uh, let me emphasize that uh, obviously, let me go back to the definition here. You're taking the functions f, which satisfy this inequality here. Of course, if you if this inequality here is satisfied, it means that this is supremum here. It's finite. But of course, if you take a larger row and you know that the supremum is finite, then with the smaller row, the supremum is finite as well. That's a trivial remark. Okay. So this remark boils down to the following. So if row one and row two belong to zero plus infinity, infinity is also okay, and row one is less or equal than row two, then the class M P R to the minus lambda with the larger row two in omega, it's a subspace. For me, this symbol becomes, uh, means a subspace, which means it's in, and also we have a linear structure on both hand sides in M, so this is subspace of this one, E R to the minus lambda, R1 omega. Not only, and the corresponding embedding, the corresponding inclusion, inclusion is continuous. Okay. And this means uh, simply that you can estimate uh, this norm in terms of this norm, which is obvious because row one is smaller than row two. You take a supremum on a bigger interval, you have a possibly a larger number, okay? And uh, next, we want to say the following. Next, we want to say that if row one and row two are finite, are both, ah, sorry, both finite, then the inclusion, this inclusion here, is an equality. So we want to prove the following proposition, if you wish. So omega subset of Rn as above, omega open. No information on the set, maybe very wild, maybe unbounded, no problem. And uh, here are any questions. So then you take lambda, an exponent which is between zero and plus infinity. 
and then it can be as, as before, between one and plus infinity, including these three endpoints. If row one, row two belong to zero plus infinity, but are not infinity, so I want them to be finite, then we have the equality. And the corresponding norms are equivalent. Linger norms are equivalent. Okay, so you see, this is an exercise, but still there is a tricky point in this exercise. So just for the sake of using the starting using the more in arms, I will work it out now for you. I will not do this for everything, but the proof. So let's try to prove this. First of all, you have row one and row two. Then this equality here, it's obviously satisfied if row one is equal to row two is equal to row one. Okay. okay. If row one equal to row two, statement is obvious. The statement is obvious. Thus, we can assume, we can assume, assume that that row one is less than. Then. We have already pointed out before that uh, immediately you have this inequality here, this uh, inclusion here. So it suffices uh, by the above. It suffices to show that the other inclusion, right? So that R minus lambda or one P omega is a subspace and with a continuous inclusion of R M to the R minus lambda comma R two P omega, which is the reverse inclusion of what you see here. It's the reverse inclusion of this one. So this part is about estimating the row two norm with the row one norm. So we need to estimate to estimate F row two R minus lambda P omega in terms of The difficulty is this, this. Here we are taking a supremum on a larger interval, 0 or 2, because or 2 is bigger. And here we are taking the supremum on a smaller interval. And we are asking to estimate the supremum with the big by means of the supremum with the small. And of course, there has to be, you, we have to do something about it, right? Because it's not obvious at all, or at least at first sight. So, as I said, we will work out of this proof just as an exercise on these, these um, more norms. So, F over 2, R to the minus lambda P omega is, and this is just the definition, by the way, there is no mathematics, no, no arguments here, just writing what it is. So, as the point X and the radius R are where the point X is in, in omega. And instead, the radius r is in zero, comma the bigger row, the row two of r minus lambda norm of f l p b x r intersection of here. Okay. 
And uh, now the idea is to realize that uh, this guy here can actually be written as 0, 1. Okay. Because of two is bigger. Okay. And therefore, this is actually equal, but uh, so less or equal than the maximum between these two numbers. First, we take the supremo of this interval here. And second, we take the supremo of this second interval. So, okay. So, x, comma, r in omega times 0 or 1, r to the minus lambda, f, and p, b, x, comma, r, intersection omega. And then you will write the same, but instead of using the interval 0 or 1, we use R1 root 2. X comma R in omega times R1 root 2. R to the minus lambda F and e B X R intersection omega. Okay, so this is really obvious. You take the supremo on the whole, it's also equal to the supreme, the maximum between the supremo on the first part of the interval, and then on the second part. Is two. No problem in estimating the first one, because you remember our task, our task is to estimate this in terms of the supremo with row one. So no problem with this one, because this is Max. So here there is no problem because this is just F row one R to the minus lambda P omega. And then the problem is estimating the this other part. X comma R in omega times from one or two R to the minus lambda F and P BXR times omega. So all the effort now is to estimate this second part because this is already what we want, right? We want to estimate this with row two in terms of this with row one. So the problem is here. Let me change color here. So our problem now is estimating this. Okay, and I will say this, the red inequality. So the supremum, so let's do it. X comma R in omega times um, row one, row two of R to the minus lambda F LP EXR intersection omega. This is what we want to estimate. And uh, now look at this interval here. You have R here. We have a negative power here. So R ranges between R, row 1 and row 2. Row 1 is smaller than row 2. Therefore, this is the largest where, where when R is row 1, this term here, right? Instead, here you have an intersection of a ball with omega. And this is largest when R become, gets close to row 2. So this is evidently less or equal than row one, the minus lambda, supremum x in omega of f l p b x comma um, uh, uh, x comma row two of uh, then I intersection omega. Now. You see, I have this omega here. I prefer to work, let's say, with both only, without this omega here. And therefore, what I do, I remember the definition of extensor. So this, I observe, this is trivial. Over one minus is just simplifying the notation, nothing else. X in omega. Here, I do not take F, but I write the extension, the zero extension, you remember, omega F. You know, in such a way that here you have now LP of 
bx comma root 2. The same, this is equal to this, okay? And uh, red inequality means really, it means that uh, this, which is what I have underlined here, it's less or equal than this, red. Now, what do we have to do? You remember, we wanted to estimate all of this in terms of this. This means that we have to estimate this in terms of this. This means that we have to estimate the red one at the end in terms of the supremum with the row one. And the bad, bad idea, bad thing here is, well, we have to do something about, I'm sorry, not bad, that uh, here you have row two. But instead, uh, this is supremum here, it's with row one, which is smaller. So what to do? What to do in this case? So next, uh, we choose an arbitrary number in the interval row one, zero, row one, small enough. Next, we choose, next, uh, which, remembering that we want to estimate this in terms of this, okay? So next, uh, we choose, we choose, there are many choices we can make. We make this one a number in the small interval zero or one, for example. Or one over two is okay. Not the only choice, of course. And uh, we try to estimate. The supremum of the red inequality. So the supremum of extension omega f. Be careful, I'm writing a P of B x with a larger radius in terms of in terms of the supremum x always in omega. But here I take the omega f and p, and here I put instead, um, maybe it's better to change here then, because it will not be exactly the same point. So it's a new down variable, because you can do what you want. And p, uh, z comma uh, one over two. So interesting because row two is bigger than one over two, and we want to estimate this supremum in terms of this supremum, okay? Which means a little bit of an argument. And you can ask me why. Why should I do it? Of course, answer, because, because we can estimate this problem, we can estimate, we can estimate the supremum, we said the z in omega, the omega f, lp of the z over one by two, I'm sorry, z comma, pardon, in this point. z one, z comma, one over two, which is this one, in terms of what we need, which was, remember, F a row one comma to the minus lambda, the omega, and close the proof. So we do this, we're finished. And this that I'm saying here, it's quite easy, so let me see it now. And we do the blue inequality. Blue. So the supremum, if you take as omega of E omega, the extended function of F on LP of uh, B, sorry, yeah, I forgot the B. B, X over one over two. Mm 
which is this one, okay? I'm sorry, uh, we, we decided Z there, yes. Not X, it's a dumb variable, it's the same. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what this is. This is, I go back to the supremum, the in omega. I have F and B, B, the Z comma rho one over two, the section omega. And uh, here you see you have the radius r1 over 2, and this is a point of 0, 1. Therefore, now I write something larger if I take a supremum with all these radii here, right? Supremum, sorry. Supremum x, r in omega times 0 over 1. So you see, I'm taking a supremum where the radius is 0, 1. Here I have only 1 over 2, right? So I get something bigger. F and B. E, X, R, the section omega. And now I, you see, at the end of the story, I want to estimate in terms of this Mori constant. So I want this r to the minus lambda to appear, right? So I multiply and divide by r minus lambda. Super. x comma r, the omega times 0 over 1, r to the lambda, r to the minus lambda, f, lp, e x r, intersection omega. Okay? And that's, but uh, in the interval 0, rho 1, the radius is less or equal than rho 1. So less or equal than rho 1, the lambda power. And then you have the supremum, r minus lambda, but this is just the Mori constant. Here we have uh, rho 1, right? r to the minus lambda, p omega. And this is the end of the blue inequality. Blue inequality allows you to estimate this one in terms of what we want at the end, the Mori constant of the one, okay? So now all we have to do is to estimate this soup in terms of this soup, okay? So we could call it the green inequality. To estimate this soup in terms of this soup, and which is the last inequality we need. So now we try to estimate. So now, oh, by the way, sorry, now it's a 253. So I want to understand what you prefer. So if you want to make a five minutes break, or not in the lectures, between the two lectures. Do you wish to make five minutes or not? I guess it's up, it's up to you, I mean. It, it's, no, it's up to you. Refer. But there are so many students, so some, some maybe want to have a break, some not, so you <laughs> decide yourself. For me, it, it's really no problem. Maybe for the next lecture, you tell me what uh, the okay. students prefer and then, so. Okay. Now let's finish the proof. Maybe then we make a two minutes break. Okay, how about that? Okay, great. Okay, so, so now we try to prove the green estimate. So now we try to try to prove the green estimate. Estimate. Which is, I, I say again, I try to estimate the supremum with the balls of radius R2, which is bigger in terms of the supremum on the balls with the radius R1 over 2, which needs a trick. Of course, we have to use our assumption, otherwise there is no. Okay, so, and, uh, so let's start with the remark, which is the following, so the ball, B of center zero and radius R2, which is the big boy, 
closed is compact. Then there exist points, let's say xi1 dot xi, let's say m over rho 2. Where m over rho 2 is uh, a number, an integer number, which may be very big depending on the number of rho 2. Okay. And um, such that. You can cover the ball of center zero and radius of two with the union of balls. We decided from one point one. Ball of center phi j and the smaller radius, so row one over four. Before coming to this lecture, of course, I, I worked out the computations and I realized that one of four is small enough. And they should work okay. And of course, any small number would be okay. So, and this inclusion holds. This is just uh, why do these points exist? Just because it is compact. When you have an open cover, you compare set, you can uh, extract a final star covering. And uh, but then you use the translation invariance. So now, of course, this relation which holds for zero will imply a relation of inclusion for all points of our end. So hence, the center with, uh, the ball with center X and radius of two, you can shift it. It's going to be S J equal to one to M over two of the ball, and you translate everything. So X plus Xi J comma row one over four, it's okay. This is going to be for x is nothing. This is obvious. You just check the both. And now we do our estimates. So you take x if x green estimate. If x is in, we start with green estimate. If x is in omega, then let's review again the green estimate. Green estimate, you want to take the soup when x is in omega, we are fixing an x of the LP norm on the ball of center X and radius over two. So now we just fixed an X and we are going to estimate this in terms of what? In terms of the right hand side of the green, the balls with radius by one over two, okay? And uh, then you have, that's the less than five green equality, green estimate sign. And then here you have LP, Ball X with the bigger radius. It's less or equal. Okay, so let me do the following. I write for you the corresponding uh, statement for P finite, uh, but of course for P infinity is the same. Yeah, this is for P finite. But then it's the same. For you see here you're integrating on the big ball. But the big ball is contained in this union of big balls. So this is uh, less or equal than, let's make it this way, sums j equal to 1 to m over 1 to 2 of uh, balls bx plus psi j comma 1 over 4. F, um, sorry, here you have uh, e omega f, okay. Yeah, p one with p, but then you can take the largest of them, right? You can take the largest of them, and you have how many? M row two, M row two of them. So this is less or equal M row two to the one with p, and here you take the supremum as j equal to one up to the biggest of them of E omega F LP ball of center X plus psi J comma one two four. Right. Now we make a trivial remark. Trivial remark is the following. Here you're integrating the extension of F E omega F. 
and you know that this is zero outside of F. Or inside of us, sorry, the mean. This means that if this ball does not meet omega, this is zero. So this is precisely equal to M02, the one by P, supremum, J equal to one, comma, M02. And now we add a condition, the condition that to be X plus psi J, um, I'm sorry, oh, um, comma, for one over four, intersection omega is not empty. Because it is simply, this is zero, right? And then I rewrite exactly what I have. Okay. Very well. Now let's make a picture. This is omega. And this is one of these balls. And you have the point uh, uh, somewhere, the point uh, this is center, which will be x plus x i j, somewhere. But you know that this intersection here is not empty. Therefore, you can take, pick up, let's take, we take point uh, y, x, j, which belongs in omega, intersection b, x, psi, psi, j, comma, rho, one, over four. Okay, I take a point here. And uh, then I realize that the ball, that this ball here, it's contained in the ball of center y, x, comma, j, or one, or two, by the triangular inequality. So this point here will be, this will be y, x, j, this point here, okay? But then if this is a bigger ball, it contains this one. So let's have equal m over two, one will be, Supremum j equal to one m two with the condition that the ball that the ball was what was it that the ball x plus psi j comma one over four meets omega. Otherwise, remember this is just a zero. And this now I put a bigger one. I take this norm LP norm on LP ball with center y, x, j, and radius the bigger one, or one over two. But now these radii are small, remember, or one over two, that's what we want. And uh, then, of course, these are just points of omega, right? Then we can take the, the supremum on all these numbers when, not only when y, when we have a center here, y, x, j, which is a point of omega but it is less equal with an arbitrary point of omega. And uh, this is supremum is less or equal than uh, supremum when z belongs to omega, because this is a point of omega, e omega f, lp, all of center z, and radius rho one over two, okay? Because this is one of these poles, right? And so this was the green statement, uh, right? So the green inequality is precisely this one. We have estimated this one in terms of this one. So if you wish, we can summarize, and we have that the supremum, supremum as a z belongs to, um, x, I'm sorry, x belonging to omega of e omega f lp b x with a big radius, less or equal than the supremum I'm sorry, no, um, I forgot the constant. 
Pardon. Un retour au one dropping. Soup. Z in omega. I omega F. Et puis, Z comma one over two. So we estimated the supremum with the larger balls in terms of the supremum with the smaller balls. But the price we pay is the appearance of this constant here, m, m rho 2, which may be very, very big if rho 2 is big. Okay. And uh, so this is the green coin. Call it the green. Now we put together all the colors and we make the estimate that we need and we finish the proof. So let me switch to black again, the color again. So we I'm summarizing the inequalities that we proved F rho two comma R to the minus lambda P omega less or equal. Do you remember first step was the maximum between F rho one comma R to the minus lambda P omega? And here you have the supremum when X was in omega and the row was R, ah, sorry was in row one, row two, of R to the minus lambda, F usual, and in arm, in XR. I'm copying from up. This was really a, a trivial inequality. But then we used the red inequality, and we proved that this was less or equal than max. I copy this, row one, R to the minus lambda, P omega, comma. And I use the red inequality. Red inequality said that this was a one minus lambda. Supremum X in omega. Sorry, omega. Of E omega F and P on the big balls. Okay. But then we use the green inequality that we have here. Green inequality says that this is less or equal than, sorry, sorry, the, yes. So maybe I can put also a call here. So red inequality was to go from row one, uh, from the, the super, I'm sorry. Here. Cool. But then we estimate this with the green inequality. And this was less or equal than the max. Yeah, I copy, I put apostrophe here for this one, okay? So it will save me a moment. So row, row one minus lambda, m over two, one over p. And then you have the supremum Z in omega, E omega F, LP, BZ, O1 over 2, with the small one, green inequality. And we put the color. And color is starting from here. And here, okay, okay, and then we use the blue inequality. Blue inequality says that I can estimate. Uh, you remember, it was this one. In terms of what? Maximum. Commas here, R1, M02, one of the P. I estimated the supremum, which was M02. By the way, there is a row minus lambda for the figures. M and the is row one lambda, lambda F, R1, comma P, comma sorry, R2 to the minus lambda. 
come up become omega. And this was the building quality. Let me write that out. Um, okay. And uh, but this, we are again now, this is equal to the maximum. Here I collect uh, what was in here, which I also find here, and therefore I put one here. Oh, one lambda minus lambda cancels out. And here you have F, row one, comma, R to the minus lambda, comma, P, comma, omega. We have finished. You see, interesting that uh, here you have a big row two, which is big. At the end of the game, you have a one which is small, but the pay, you price you pay, you have this number which can be very large. But this is independent of uh, F, of course, depends on the one and O2. You cannot put the O2 equal to the plus infinity, as you can see. So you need it to find it. Proof is complete, hence, the proof is complete. So, we have just proved what? That class, the more a class, r to the minus lambda rho, p omega, does not depend on rho. If rho is finite. Okay. Now I want to make a few comments on the more classes. Okay. Some remarks. The remark number one is that uh, if rho is finite, as it was in the previous proof, then you remember that uh, the membership, the definition. F of the Moray norm, uh, rho, comma, r to the minus lambda p omega, involves what? Information on F only on the balls B, X, R intersection omega with uh, R in zero R. That is a right neighborhood of zero. Of zero, right? And we have just proved before that the membership of F in one of these classes does not depend on rho. And by the previous proposition, the membership of F in the class and R to the minus lambda rho P omega is not affected, is not influenced. by a different choice of row. Right? Hence, you could choose row small. Row small. So in other words, so, the membership of F in the class M R to the minus lambda rho P omega can be interpreted
as a regularity condition. In the sense that it depends on the behavior of F. close to each x omega, right? A different story, instead this rho is infinity. If instead rho equal to plus infinity and omega is unbounded, otherwise of course they're the same. And uh, Omega A unbounded. The definition of F a rho comma to the minus lambda P omega, which involves the supremum on balls with arbitrarily large radius when being divided. So you see all values involves information on F both if f if r is small and if f if r is close plus infinity right and thus the membership of f the membership of F in Ahmad or the minus lambda O the omega can be interpreted on one hand at a regularity condition. But on the other hand, also as a condition on the behavior of that. Infinity. Clearly, if omega is bounded, then also, of course, we have m r minus lambda b omega rho equal to the case with infinity. This obvious one definition, nothing to say. Okay, and uh, now we have a wish. Next, so this was the end of the other remark. We would like to make a unified treatment, a unified treatment for the classes m r to the minus lambda rho p omega and rho is finite and m r to the minus lambda plus infinity 
people need them. So we now want to make start to start proving theorems for these classes and then for these classes, well, let's say treat them together. And also treat at the same time also other classes. Thus, we are motivated, let's say, to introduce the following definition of generalized Morley spaces. Hence, we introduce the following definition. of generalized Y space, which will be enable us to treat uh, at the same time the case of the first type of classes, this one, and also this one, okay, at the same time. So it is a convenient uh, definition, not only something that the mathematicians introduced to prove more theorems, let's say, okay? So, definition. So, omega again, I want to be in a M, I'm going to open it. P, again, it's going to be between one and plus infinity, it's okay, or if it touches infinity. And I want to introduce a weight, which goes from zero plus infinity to, Okay, I want to be clear about this point, that uh, mo most people prefer to use weights which are always positive, but here I want to allow also that the weight is zero. As you shall see, it is done really to be able to treat these two classes. Of course, for many statements, maybe you have to assume that it is different from zero, but nevertheless, for the general definition, I want to give uh, the definition allowing that it is zero here. So, and uh, we set, we set that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot, uh, also maybe, also, we can write in both ways, but in any case, I prefer to write it this way. So, so if and at also f, sorry, f from omega to r measurable. Okay. And uh, then we define as generalized, no, sorry, no, no, no. Uh, then we set, uh, then we set f. Let, let's put let here again, so let. The same type of symbol we have introduced before. So F arrow, now you do not have R to the minus lambda, you remember you had it before. Now we choose this weight. Then we put the point P as before and the set omega as before. And this is going to be the supremum as X comma R belongs to mega times zero. So O is allowed to be in zero plus infinity, including infinity, okay? And uh, of, we do not write R to the minus lambda before, we write R, um, WR, so a more general function, which is not necessary R to the minus lambda. And then we write precisely as before, can be earlier in the lecture, x comma r intersection omega. Okay, so this is roughly speaking notation, nothing else. And uh, we define as generalized Mori space, so we define, this is the definition, as generalized. More space with weight W W and exponent P P the set.
we write this way. You remember before we had r to the minus lambda, but here we write w and that's it. P omega set of f in r to the omega. So function from omega to r, the symbol means precisely. F is measurable. And also you want that f plus infinity w p omega is right. And we set norm here, actually semi norm by the moment. WP omega precisely this number. For all F. And it's good to see that if if W is not identically zero. Identically equal to zero. This is an arm. Oh, verification is trivial really. Norm. If it only, but if, it, if if W is zero, then this is identically zero. This is only a semi norm, but not a norm. It is totally useless as an object. And uh, I want to conclude. I have still three minutes with an exercise which I do not work, but it's just a curiosity. So one may wonder. Whether the number F rho W P omega would change if we replace omega by omega bar, if we replace omega by the closure of omega bar? The answer is no. Is no, but this is just a curiosity. So, in other words, the supremum of x r times a zero from w rho r f l p on b x r intersection omega equals the supremum x comma r in omega bar times zero r o of w r f and p b x r intersection omega. Okay, proof is exercise. Exercise. See the handouts if you wish, because I give you the answer there, okay? But uh, I um, I do not wish to to waste my time in this way. So remark if you wish exercise. Okay. So now I want to see. Uh, let's see. Let I uh, see some examples of generalized monthly spaces. And including the um, classes that we have provided. But now I guess my time is over, right? Um, yes. Yes, just one minute, but uh, you didn't have a break, so actually. So, so, so but in any case, I, I think uh, it doesn't make sense that I start a new, a new start examples now that uh, we have 30 seconds. So, so. Okay, so, uh, so I hope. Um, it was understandable in the sense that the internet connection was not bad. And as I said, I will give you some uh, some written text in case you missed something. Okay, Professor. So thank you all of you for for, for uh, listening to my, my lecture. And we will meet tomorrow, if I understand, right? Yes, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, Moscow time. Rostov, uh, Moscow uh, Rostov time. Yes. Okay, so... Well, thank you, thank you, Professor Massimilas de Gretzoferis, and thank all participants, and see you tomorrow. Thank you.
Okay, bye. Okay, bye, 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 bye. Bye. <laughs>